Hello, I'm Sarah from the Gulf Turf Grass Institute, and today I have Corey Floon with us to talk turf. So Corey, is there anything you'd like to correct or add based on my explanation of the video I did about your abstract? I thought it was, I thought it was pretty um, representative of what the abstract stated. So you know how we did like the cycling event where we deacclimated the turf mm -hmm. in a chamber? Yeah, that was the, the temperature fluctuation. Yeah. So there was the samples that we tested right away to see like how their acclimation status was affected. But then we also had samples that we put back into the field to see if they were if they could like reacclimate, mm -hmm. like be able to regain their um, their cold tolerance. And we showed that they could they could um, they could regain their cold tolerance up to the amount that was of the samples that um, we didn't put through a, uh, a thawing cycle. The treatment is the treatment here is the thawing cycle versus mm -hmm. uh, samples that we we actually took them out of the field and put them in a freezer at negative two just to give them like a replicate of like the type of mechanical damage they would undergo when being taken out of the field, that sort of thing. Yeah. And what, what we saw is they were able to reacclimate to like the same sort of potential that the ones in the freezer that didn't go through a thawing cycle were able okay. to. Okay. So that's good. So the abstract is only 250 words. It's supposed yeah. to summarize two or more years of research. What did you do that didn't make it into the abstract? Like, did you have to do preliminary experiments or what else did you do? I, I guess I did a preliminary experiment the year before um, that kind of just like taught me a lot about the process, how to do freezer tests, how to actually ensure that every sample in the freezer is getting the same amount of freezing. Because mm. if you, because I, because I have so many samples, I had to put them on like shelves in the freezer. And I did a test where I ran it without fans. And then I did, and then I did a test where I ran it with fans and it was significantly different when you didn't run it with the fans. So yeah. just learning how to do the experimental design, making sure my methods are sound, making sure everything in the freezer is getting the same treatment. Or I've even seen that in my own refrigerator. If I put my eggs to the top shelf, they freeze versus yeah. if I put them somewhere in the middle, then they're okay. Yeah. So that kind of applies to even my own real life. Maybe I should put a fan in my fridge. <laughs> so do you think that plant, gro plant growth regulators, PGRs, do they work? And if so, who would you recommend them to? So the question is, do they work for um, retaining cold tolerance? Yes and no. Um, yeah. I think there needs to be some pause with it because you, you can have statistical significance, but it might not be what's considered biological significance or clinical significance. So is that, so we saw in the second cycle with regards to tranexamic ethyl that there's about a two degree difference. So um, the control had about negative 15.5 uh, LT50, mm -hmm. while the one of tranexamic ethyl was down to like ne negative 17.5. I don't really know if that two degree difference would make um, a massive difference in the actual field. And to apply something down like a plant growth regulator, I don't, I can't say for certain whether that's like economically worth it. Get when you that, say LT50, that's the the lethal temperature to kill half of the plant. To kill 50% right? of the population. Yeah. I don't know if you know, like pharmacology, they use what's called a, a LD50, which is like the lethal dose. And it mm -hmm. runs on like a sigmoidal curve and they see where 50% survives. And that's like where the 50% is, it's on this like um, exponential curve levels off. The 50% is where the inflection point is, where it goes from concave up to concave down. But it's sort of, instead of increasing dose, we're decreasing temperature. So at a very low temperature, we will kill grass. Yes, But we're exactly. looking at the temperature to kill only half the grass. Correct. Right, that's really cool. Really cool. <laughs> uh, I'm pumped. So let's talk about you a little bit. Yep. Um, what brought you to turf grass research? Like, did you study this in undergrad when you did a bachelor's or, or were you interested in it from high school? Where, 
How did you come to Turf Grass? Um, how I did a I did my undergrad in environmental science, and I was just interested in doing a. I just wanted a project. I just wanted an opportunity to do scientific research. So I came down to meet with the um, grad coordinator of SES at the time, which was Tom Shung, your farmer, um, your farmer supervisor. Yeah. And I guess I was in the lobby and I must have just looked kind of lost. And this uh, big guy came up and started talking to me. And turns out he was uh, he was a he was a supervisor. He's a PI. And I started talking to him and I started asking him if he had any opportunities. And he said, it's my name. Just send me an email. We can uh, we can talk it out. And yeah, we've uh, we've got along ever since. But the rest is history. Yeah. That's amazing. It was just meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> when I was when I did my master's, I found that I learned a lot of things, not just about microdocium in the valley and carbon dioxide. That was my project. <laughs> so what did you learn during your master's studies, aside from what you learned about winter hardiness and turf grass? I learned a few things that apply to like all realm of science, like how science is conducted, like how to design an experiment, how to make sure you have proper controls, I guess, it, just like broad, like uh, broadly speaking, like applies to other realms of science, like, like nutrition and just how to read an academic paper, honestly, like, yeah, how to go through a method section, how to, how to go, how to interpret results Did they, are they actually answering the question that they set out to, to uh, investigate? Like, that's a huge thing to be able to understand. Yeah, I feel like I learned a lot about that and stats because stats, like yeah. statistics, I I thought I knew math before I came to do my master's and then later I didn't. I, I like that you mentioned the difference between statistically different and biologically different because yeah. I find so many people get stuck on the on the numbers and don't think about, hmm, is two two degrees really different in the mm -hmm. real world? I think that's analyzing papers of, and, and looking at if they actually made a real world difference, I think that's important. So what have you been up to since you defended in 2019? I, um, I went back to Kingston for two months and I worked in a tire factory and I realized I got really bored of that. Yeah. And I, uh, I saw Eric at my graduation and I guess it was in October of 2019. And I said, hey, uh, I'd like to come back to the lab and work on any types of projects you have going on. And um, the two main things, I guess, uh, we had a collaboration with um, CNLA, which is the Canadian Nursery Landscape Association, and they wanted us to help them put together a carbon calculator for um, quantifying carbon sequestration of different uh, land covers. So like turf, trees, uh, shrubs. It's basically quantifying the, uh, in terms of our calculator calculating the net carbon that actually gets incorporated in the ground after you take into account uh, respiration, like maintenance respiration, but also microbial respiration and breakdown of uh, plant material. And then also like the hidden carbon costs that go into it. Like if you have a lawn, you have to mow it. If you have trees, you have to, you have to trim them like and fertilizer. There's all types of maintenance things that go into that. And then, so at the end of the day, we boil it down to the amount of carbon, the net carbon that, that's um, sequestered in that ecosystem. Wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you? I'm going back to school to become a nurse. That's amazing. How is the pivot from turf to nurse? That's a good, qu that's a good question. There's a lot of, it's very nuanced. It wouldn't be, it's not just like one thing or another thing. Um, yeah. My mom, my mom's a nurse. She teaches at Queens. Um, so I've had a lot of insight in my life into nursing. And I just like the, um, I really like the idea of using science and applying it to like help people who need it uh, directly. That's awesome. And that's exactly what we need, especially this year yeah. <laughs> and last. So thank you so much for joining me and asking, letting me ask you these silly questions about turf grass mm -hmm. and all the best in your in your future science career thank you thank you very much for the interview